Hey guys, hope you're doing great and safe. Uh, I'm thrilled to give a lecture at Aerospace Village this year, and that's an uh, honor for me and appreciate it. I hope you will enjoy my presentation. Uh, in fact, Today I'm not going to talk about ordinary topics regarding aviation and something like that. Actually, I'm going to talk about um, a novel topic, something more practical and different from anything you heard before. Because we are at DEFCON, so we must talk about something possible which makes sense. This presentation covers radio-based and signaling vulnerabilities which impact on passengers, um, airplane, and other avionic components. Also, I will give you a deep and clear perspectives like a malicious passenger, malfactor in a radio field, and uh, a hacker who has an access to the mobile network. Hello my friends and welcome to my talk. I'm Ali Abdullahi, a cybersecurity engineer with over eight years of experience in a variety of fields. Uh, I love to share my experience and little knowledge with others and also love bug hunting to make our world uh, a safer place for everyone. And I'm a regular speaker and trainer at famous cybersecurity and hacking conferences like Cocoon B-Sides, TyphoonCon, CyberJungle, OWASP AppSec Days, Confidence, and this year except Aerospace Village, DEFCON Red Team, and AppSec Village. So, please consider all avionic components as well as airplane as wick team uh, while I'm presenting my research. This is because each components like passenger, entertainment, navigation systems, etc. are subscribers when using mobile communications. So uh, the purpose of this talk is to deep dive uh, into this communication which call air to ground or A2G and I'm going to show you possible attack vectors from radio and signaling points of view which threaten the nodes. Um, what is A2G system? A2G stands for air to ground system which is based on mobile or cellular technologies like GSM, UMTS, and LT. Aircrafts, UAVs, etc. Uh, and the, the main usage of this system is to bring high-speed connections when you are flying on the ground. Uh, however, when you are on the sea, airplane can take advantage from satellite communications. But uh, there are some big differences between A2G and satellites like low latency, ease of use, low cost implementation, and more flexibility. The first and foremost usage of air to ground is to bring uh, mobile broadband connectivity for passengers when flying. Other avionic components in airplane like EFB and IFE could take advantage from this network. Improving onboard cabin services, real-time monitoring and uh, easy and flexible management or other advantages of air-to-ground systems. So here is the whole architecture of the system. Uh, as you can see, an airplane in this picture connected to the ground via direct air to ground system or using satellite communications. So there are some uh, base stations or radio towers which 
called BTS, Node V in 3G or Enode V in 4G. Um, <clears throat> some of this network called uh, Radio Access Network or RAN. And the second part is the mobile core network, which handles signal and communications and connected to the RAN and other networks. In this picture, EPC uh, stands for Evolved Packet Core or Circuit Switch in LTE technology. Uh, well, uh, now I'm going to talk about possible offensive scenarios in radio access networks. Whenever an attacker has unauthorized access to the base station by breaking the fence or maybe as an insider attacker can intercept the connections and manipulate it between airplane and the ground. So in this case, our malfactor located on the ground. This one is a hot topic, in-flight fake BTS or IMZ catcher. You may hear it many, many times about a fake BTS or fake base stations and IMC catchers in the news. But this time it's different because the vector is something else and this is our first part of attack kill chain. To do this, malicious passenger or malfactor uh, jamming the current signals in the field using jammers and after that we'll run an easy catcher or fake BTS to perform a man in the middle to retrieve one of the most valuable value called EMC. <clears throat> in this case an attacker will gather all passengers and components EMC numbers to perform further exploitation. Again, another hot topic. Um, in flight sniffing, to perform it, we need to have a RTL SDR or Blade RF, Hank RF, USRP, and, or Osmocom and Motorola C115 or 118. And in this scenario, while an attacker uses this equipment, he or she can sniff all in transit data. As you can see, all packets sent and received, like voice, data, and network info, have captured here. You can see all LT RRC pa uh, protocols packets here, and signal connection release packets captured here, and all paging request, uh, requests uh, captured, and you can see in this picture. Here is another proof of concept which points to an IMC number. So, in this picture, you can see all SIM card details which an attacker retrieved via Osmocom BB. In other scenario, an attacker can take advantage from an open source script called TMC Sniffer to sniff uh, all TMC numbers on board. Um, what is TMC actually? Uh, as I told you before, uh, because IMC number is a unique value for each subscriber, it is very important uh, to Let's exchange the actual IMC number in radio networks. Components use um, Team C, which is a random number based on the actual IMC value to reduce the risk of IMC disclosure. And here you can see uh, the attacker uh, sniffing all Team C number on board or in the field. If GSM technology works or an attacker can jam the LTE or UMTS frequencies to force the network to downgrade to GSM, uh, 
the attacker can review the network encryption level to analyze the security level or maybe uh, if there is no sufficient encryption and uh, this is a very good news for a hacker well 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 um, this is time to start one of uh, this is time to clone passenger SIM card it's interesting to do this malicious scenario we need just to some basic info regarding the targeted SIM card which gathered from uh, previous states and a SIM card reader or even our Osmocom environment okay dear passengers I have all your mobile device teams in number and we are going to perform denial of service okay so this is our first DOS scenario and in this case we will take advantage from MZ detach request to disrupt mobile node availability in radio network so <laughs> here is another way so passengers please don't worry because we are going to DOS again in this case the attacker will abuse paging requests and will respond to it instead of the real mobile node so most of mobile network operators or MNOs and service providers all around the world are still using um, traditional and vulnerable mobile technologies like GSM and UMTS so in this case all mobile core network vulnerabilities like SS7 and SIGTRAN are possible because the attacker also has passengers in the number these attack categorize in approximately four classes fraud spoofing denial of service and privacy violation for example, sending a purge query, which is a map or mobile application port message to the core network will purge a subscriber information from the database or even DOS the passengers uh, using update location message or cause um, impersonating. So now I'm going to talk about other attack vectors inside the core network and that is exploiting the onboard mobile nodes using packet data. The picture illustrates the connection between the airplane and the core network specifically packet data by using air to ground the airplane connected to the base station after that, using S1U interface, the data will reach to serving gateway. And the next node is packet gateway, which is connected to the internet or any PLMN. Okay, so in this scenario, attacker will cause data or packet manipulation availability disruption or even fraud by performing a brute force attack on TID or tunneling endpoint identifier actually a TID specifies GTP or GPRS tunneling protocol endpoints to transmitting the data so in this case a packet data request sent to the core network from uh, for example a passenger However, during the procedures of transmitting the data between mobile node and SGW, PGW, 
and uh, an attacker brute forcing TID to exploit it. So the connection disrupts and the attacker can perform denial of service, fraud, etc. Hey folks, that's awesome because again, we are going to perform denial of service, manipulation and fraud this time by abusing GTP or GPRS tunneling protocol, which is playing a vital role in packet core. These are going to done uh, because the attacker has passengers information. In this case, like the previous one, the attacker will abuse GTP delete session request to cause DOS or even impersonation as well as create PDB context request. After these procedures, uh, the attacker could take advantage from in-flight passengers data session to perform fraud, terminate passengers data flow, or even intercepting the data. Thank you, my dear friends, for your attention. You can stay in touch with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. And many thanks, Aerospace Village organizers and sponsors to deliver such a great event. I will come back soon with my new research and hope to see you soon. Stay safe.